Hey, in this tutorial, we'll take a look at customizing Storyline's player at the slide level. So by default, when you create a new slide in Storyline, you'll see the previous and next buttons like you see in this example. But there may be times when you don't need a next button or maybe you want to create on slide navigation. Well, take, take this slide, for example, the welcome screen, right? There's no navigation on this screen because it's asking me for uh, my name. And then upon clicking or entering my name and then clicking submit, I'm then advanced to the next slide. Same thing here, right? There isn't a next button or a previous button on this slide. And sometimes you just may want to uh, create the navigation all at the slide level. The quizzes are another example of non-standard navigation, right? So when you get to the uh, question, you just see a submit button right here. And it's when you make a choice, you click submit, and then you are uh, presented with the next button up here in the feedback. So let's take a look at how to set this up on a slide-by-slide -slide basis. I'm going to close the preview. All right, so we're here in story view, and of course this is the big picture view of our course. If you click a slide, you'll notice some properties over here in the bottom right for slide properties. You have the choice for how the slide's going to advance. So by default, it's set to by user, which means that the user controls the, uh, the advancement of the slides. Or you could have a self-running slide or presentation where uh, when the slide reaches the end of the timeline, it's automatically going to jump to the next slide. You also have some controls here for how to uh, how the slide should behave when it's revisited, right? Does it resume objects to the save state, initial state, or should Storyline just sort of guess? Down here, you have the slide navigation and gestures. So remember this one, double click it, right? There is no navigation on the slide because we're asking the uh, learner to enter his or her first name, click submit, and then what do we have right here? Jump to the next slide when the user presses the key. So looking down here, you can see that the slide navigation, the default, does not include a next and previous button. So that's been removed from that slide. And the same thing here for the main menu, right? The main menu is asking the learner to make a choice for each of these uh, tab links, these menu tabs, and those will jump to the new slide, but there is no navigation here. There's no buttons on this slide. It's not until we get to slides like this one where we are including the previous and next buttons. Now, if I jump back up here, I could still go back and then add at the slide level a, a previous and next button. And notice as I do this, Storyline just added the player triggers, right? So I don't have to go into each slide and add those triggers. Just by adding these two buttons, Storyline added the triggers. So watch, do it again. So the previous. Jump to previous slide when user clicks the previous button. And the same thing for uh, the next button. So Storyline's going to automatically add the triggers if I use the default player's uh, previous and next buttons. Now you see the player features offer some additional controls. So if I want to select custom options, now I have options for whether to include the menu on that slide, the notes, the seek bar. So all of these are turned off by default. These are the default player uh, settings, but if I wanted to add the seek bar in one of these slides, I could do it. So now if I preview that slide, okay, and there is our, our seek bar now enabled for this slide. So this wasn't on by default in our, in our default player settings, right, the universal settings that we set up, but we can always go back and add it individually at the slide level. Go ahead and close preview. All right, so the only thing I'd point out now is if you, if you wanted the seek bar to be visible in majority, if not all of your slides, maybe just one or two didn't have it, then I wouldn't go into each slide and then enable it, right? I wouldn't go into each of these and then come in and then enable or disable it. I would make that part of the global player setting and then just use the, uh, the, the, play, the slide properties as a one-off way to uh, just make those tweaks to the slides that don't really fit the, the default profile. But this is the benefit to using the slide properties is that you can go into each slide and then customize what shows either on the menu or the types of navigation on the seek bar for each slide. Now you can also make the same changes when you're in slide view. So if we double click any one of these slides, and this is a quiz slide, let me just, yeah, we'll stay with this one. You see the properties right here at the base layer, you have this little gear icon. If you click it, and here we have the same slide properties that we had in story view, we now have, we also have in the slide view. So if you want to make those changes while you're editing the slide, you have the same options to control whether or not the, the navigation displays, how the slide advances, and then whatever the custom player features are for that particular slide. And that's basically it for 
controlling the player properties at the slide level. The thing to keep in mind though, is that any changes you make at the slide level will override the settings you make in the course player. So whatever settings you set up here in the, uh, the player defaults will be overridden when you come into each slide and you make those changes. So that just means that if you make a change up here in the course player, right, you wanna make a global change, that change may not impact the changes you made at the slide level. So the way to work is make the, uh, the sort of the, the, the course global changes up top. If you want navigation or the seek bar on the majority of slides, use the player properties for that. And then the slides that you don't want the seek bar come in individually and make that change. That way you're kind of always keeping everything as, as much as you can rolled up into the, uh, the global player properties. But you have that control. You can come in and make all those changes anytime. So take a look at your courses, practice the activity a little bit, turn on this navigation, see how it affects the other slides. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, please post in the forums and we'll be more than happy to help you out.